Hello guys and welcome back to McCallum Productions. Before we get this video on the way, we're so close to hitting 1000 subscribers, so it'd be greatly appreciated if you guys could hit that big red subscribe button, turn notifications on and enjoy the video. I'm looking out to find my home, it's the only place where my mind goes. My Alright guys, uh, welcome back to McCallum Production Podcast, episode number 6 today, we're in Loot Maniac and the Fairman. our special guests are Dancing on Tables, how's them boys? Hello, 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 hello. 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 Three fifths today, Rob yes. is away on holiday? He is, I think he's, he's in Bath. Bath. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Cornerstone of Berry, summer holiday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's still away skiving, so um, yes. uh, just to get started obviously, We've not been long gone, but we've been trying to get you on as soon as we started. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to get through to you since you're verified. <laughs> <laughs> it's the blue tick, man. <laughs> <laughs> the blue tick attitude. <laughs> but uh, just to get started, um, obviously, you guys have been gigging long before you started as Dance on Tables. Um, when was it that you sort of first mm. were branded as Dance on Tables? Uh, well, you started it, didn't you? I came in later on. Yeah, because it was originally me and Robbie, subsequently Michael, uh, and then Hamish kind of didn't want to be in the band. I got no, I, can, can I just jump in here? I, I got duped because I was in the band, and then I went to Harry Potter World with the school. <laughs> <laughs> and then by the time I came back, Callum <laughs> <Alan, Alan Sanders. laughs> So I had to beg and plead to get me back in. Yeah. Kind enough to do so. So, so I think just kind of like. Yeah, we we played a few gigs before, like just kind of school school stuff, and and then it was a kind of a case of we had this like first gig we were and the people that Robbie somehow managed to to get because he was a massive fan. Of the I band. knew like we're taking like applications from like support like from like young bands to like come and support them at like their headline shows in the UK and. I think Robbie must have sent this like heartfelt email or something. <laughs> yeah. I am your Jeez, biggest fan. Like yeah. yeah. Hamish begging back to be in the band. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm Please sending Hamish his Snapchat. It's going. Hey. Yeah. 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 Back in, right? You weren't even old enough to play in the venue either. Yeah, I know. We got kicked out a couple of venues oh, right. uh, for me not being able to play. In Poetry in Edinburgh, we were playing like in a in the fringe, like an acoustic gig, and I just went in. I was like. Oh, where's the toilet? And she was like, ID. Can I see, can I see it? She was like, Where's your ID? And I was like, Oh, I'm I'm playing. And she was like, I don't care. And I was like, But I also need the toilet. And she was like, I also don't care. So we went out, and the guy was like, We were like, You never told us we had to be over eighteen to play. And he's like, All oh, right. And we we're like, Well, can we get you know like paid something you know for like travel fares or something. <laughs> and he just pulled out a pocket of like cop out and ten piece and that. And we're just like, it's fine, man. It's fine, it's truly mugged off. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Early days. Is that the same guys that we played with in the flat and then they made us like bag ball for lunch? Is that the same guys oh, that like, I couldn't go to that because I was at school. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a weird we did the session for this guy and they were they did like kind of acoustic stuff and like in Edinburgh and like around the meadows and whatnot and mm. it, well yeah he was like oh come and do a session in the flat so we went, went to this guy's flat in March but then <laughs> sitting there and he was like right cool so we did a couple of songs did like the tiniest interview he's like you want your lunch and we went I think <laughs> spaghetti hoops and that I'm <laughs> 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 toasting that <laughs> exposure and <in> bolognese <laughs> But I saw uh, a few rough first gigs then, and then you brought out your uh, first EP, Waiting on the Nation. Uh, yeah. yeah. Self produced, was it? That was Michael's basement. I was, uh, yeah, I was all Michael's room. And uh, yeah, it's all gone now. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be hearing that anytime soon. Yeah, it was kind of like the initial stuff. And 
I think me and Michael spent like a whole summer. Yeah, it's like everything, like everything on one mic, eh? It's like all the amps, oh, yeah. vocals, drums, Again, it's all like stole everything from the school. <laughs> <laughs> stole to be the fun. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it was a good thing to do though to kind of like first song just try and like do it ourselves and like yeah. actually looking back, it's like it was a good job considering like yeah 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 for, like kind of a first first, first time around and yeah, get that initial first experience definitely yeah definitely so and. Uh, on the back of that, about a year later, you uh, won the Dunfermline Press Awards in 2016. Yeah, uh, how, how did that feel? Obviously, at the time, you only had like the Wait on the Nation EP out. How did that feel, only having that out and it being self-produced, like it was all your own work, sort of like, how did that feel? Was it? It was like a really like, big thing for us, because like, we'd just been playing like PJs and Monty's and... I don't think we'd been getting much of like flying. anywhere else. Like, <laughs> like, just like kind of random gigs or just like, you know, wee pubs, but like mainly just getting like support gigs and like PJs. I think we'd had like one headline show at PJs or something. So like when we won that, it was like, right, people are actually like noticing like our live performance. And like, I think from then on, like that's been like a big thing. Whatever we do, it's like we want to make sure like the live thing is like the biggest part of like our show. And like, even when we're like writing songs, we're thinking like, how can you hear that being played like live and can yeah. you can you just like hear see the crowd kind of like yeah. vibing off of it and stuff yeah. and like that was great yeah. you can't remember much yet that's you no, heard, I, you I, heard I, it was a good night <laughs> no it was good it was one of those ones where it's like i can't remember who who were, who were was it amy lou amy lou and moon kids, kids and yeah. moon kids aye i mind that gig yeah <laughs> but it was one of those things where obviously because once you do the whole press awards thing you kind of know like when you get when you win the win the award, it's all kind of been pre organized before. So like right, yeah. so like the winner gets it all framed and stuff. Mm. But knowing that at the end of it was mad because we cocked up so bad because when you, your guitar wasn't even working. <laughs> oh man, this is so bad. And we thought we completely sacked this man <laughs> and ended up winning it. So it's like, and I, I'm sure uh, it was when we played after. I, like, I'm I'm a. <laughs> I mean, I'm just an embarrassment for like a live musician, <laughs> and uh, I just like electric guitar. I think I was like still using my dad's electric guitar at this point, and uh, I just I just didn't know what I was doing. What so was so it's what? like you know you know, everyone like plays before they do the award, and it's like dancing on tables, and we're like coming on. Everyone's thinking like, oh, right, and you want this to run totally smooth, and I'm going like. Not getting any sound, like total freaking out. Yeah, and I was like, turned on, <laughs> he wish I had to like put his guitar off, come over, check. He was like, Your amp's not on. And I was just like, so embarrassed. And then uh, oh, when they announced that we won, and you go on and like play another song, mm. same thing happened. <laughs> and I'm like, The amp's on. I'm like, I don't know what it is. And then she's like, You've not plugged in. <laughs> and there's what getting to you, man. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it was yeah. just. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> too many glasses of wine it's made me all <laughs> nervous and stuff oh, so obviously that's that's tough competition the quite big names within the scene obviously before yeah. being told you were one you were going to win uh, did you anticipate winning did you, how did you think it was going to go well I always thought like I was thought when I started playing in the town and stuff like you can't for me I looked at bands as like as in like the moon kids and that being like like so, uh, they were well more uh, what's yeah. known for like Established. Uh, established and we, we, so we they play like tea break and stuff I think that right. year yeah. or the they year went to LA after. and won something in LA some songwriting competition or something like that so yeah I was just thinking like they like um, got it in the bag yeah totally got it in the bag so when you find out you won it you're like fucking yes like, <laughs> even, though, even though all the cock ups and that it still kind of was good so yeah it's, it's, a, it's a plus for being a local band and winning the, the fairly music press awards it's kind of like the it's like the oscar of the tune kind of <laughs> <laughs> bit of status for the year so, uh, yeah. on the back of that he's done uh, plenty of gigging around scotland and that uh got down here Edinburgh, aberdeen inverness and that's just just a few of them um and then he's brought out don't stop pp um how did what was the writing process with that like where were you recording and things so that was such a moment I was at Chamber Studios. So that was like the first time. Well, you done like Die Young in in Loop Maniac, and then we did like the EP ourselves, and then we uh, we had like a bunch of new tunes, and we 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 just really wanted to get them right. And like I think with like the last the EP we did ourselves, it was like the sound was just like there was just like no consistency in like the style of sound. So like we wanted to go to like a good studio, and then you knew Graham from uni. Yeah. So 
went to him uh, and recorded all the tunes there and we've been back to him for like every song since mm. as well uh, you can establish just sort of that you're kind of, you're, he's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. he's you're just sound, yeah. perfect to work with he knows like what we're after and like we know like what he's great at and I so been with him ever since and like yeah it's class. Was, it was a good one actually there was lots of kind of actually starting to like, establish a sound yeah, at yeah. that point you know adding keyboards and yeah like a coherent sound and then yeah we recorded them all at uh, Graham's and then we got a guy who oh God, I think it was Neil that put us in touch with him George Schilling so this guy worked with like um, is it Frank Turner he'd done stuff with Frank Turner and he'd done stuff with, like some other artists like and, orchestral stuff too you know? yeah he kind of does some orchestral things but he had this studio like down south and actually went down and like checked out and, and he ended up kind of like producing all the songs for us and it was just like such an amazing experience because you get all these songs back and you're like god I didn't know like our stuff could, could sound, sound that good you know, yeah. the quality of it could be so like crisp <laughs> and he added loads of extra production stuff and it was you know great and then and obviously Don't Stop was a big track from that that kind of yeah continued on and eventually gained a bit more momentum so would you say it's, that was key going to the chamber then, like getting the consistency, obviously still now? I think okay. so, like it was like, I think it was just like a few, like that and like the writing style as well, like remember there was like a guy that we kind of like worked on and off with and he just like helped us with like writing and putting us in the right direction and one kind of thing, he set us this kind of like writing task and he was like, pick like your favourite song ever and he was just like, and look at like some of the chord progressions in it and try and make a song out of that and but you know like don't make like the same no, song don't, don't rip it yeah, off yeah, just yeah, like, like yeah. but you know use that as like inspiration so like for me like don't stop actually came from like i was like i want to like use something from uh something by the beatles mm. so that was like that was just like a, one little chord progression from that and i was like and then don't stop came from that but it was just like from that it was like just learn to kind of like different ways to write and stuff as well which i think has just been like from there, I think that was like a big kickstarter to like where we're getting to now, mm-hmm. and where we're working towards. That's quite a big jump for something to then. Well, oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Which was like, I was glad because I kind of thought when <laughs> when he said this, you know, I was like, we're not just gonna like rip off like <laughs> your favorite tune and that would probably make you hate it even more. But like, so it was just like finding like I was like, right, I like the verse chord progression, and I was like, I'm just gonna like see try to work around that, make it like upbeat because it's a slow tune, and uh, yeah. Even more subtle things than that, you know, like stops and you know, I don't know, production stuff. Like it all kind of, it could be literally the smallest thing, and all of a sudden it, it spurs the inspiration for something maybe totally different. Or yeah, um, um, but yeah, that was that was actually really good. That I think it, sometimes they even like take two songs and then try and like pick the best we can and mold them together. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then obviously we're saying about um, winning the press awards and um, getting quite a lot of good local coverage within the Dunfermline Press. Um, also we're getting picked up quite a lot of coverage from the Scottish Sun with uh, Jim Geltley. Oh, uh, yeah. like, obviously that's like, the Scottish Sun's one of the biggest papers in the UK, rightly or wrongly. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, obviously that's, that's good national coverage for you. Like, yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, Jim has always been good, like, like from... From even I don't know if he did he cover the Wait on the Nation EP, I can't remember. But no, from, I think from Don't like Stop. Air, from Don't, don't Stop, stop. yeah. And the sense of Don't Stop, he's every tune he's tweeting out and playing and stuff like that. In fact, we've met him a few times at uh, uh, events and that. Yeah, what's the one next month? Next month, not a wide right, yeah. yeah. And he's he's just a he's a, he's a well, see, he just like loves music, just new general. music, mm. which is like yeah I think he's like he does so much for like Scottish music especially when there's like you look at England and like BBC introducing there's like in every city or like yeah. county there and we've just got BBC introducing Scotland yeah, and it's so, so hard to get onto that yeah it's, like, it's, um, it's like a battle eh? yeah it's like there's so many people competing and yeah it's just like it's harder to get onto that whereas like I don't know with Jim you just like it's just so easy to act, to access because it's just it's his email. Mm-hmm. You just like send him the tune, yeah, yeah. and if he listen, if he likes it, and he's just like, that's great. I'll be playing it on my radio show, nice and it's one. like as simple as that. Nice, no, great. But uh, obviously, you're saying it's difficult to get on things like BBC introducing, but you've uh, played on SDV. Is that twice you've done that? Aye. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, is it the Riverside show? Riverside show. Yeah. yeah, we were like we were like dying to get on to that because we'd seen like. 
we'd seen the Moon Kids had been on it and Moonlight Zoo had been on it. And there was a couple other like bands around. We were just like, how are they getting on that? Like, because it was just like it's like playing on TV, man. Yeah. Uh, so I think we were like, it's Neil. We were just like, get us on that. Like, and he was just like, just spent ages just trying to find the contact and like, finally got there as well. I can't remember what what we played. I think it was it Don't Stop we played though. I remember the second time we played Body. Right. Because I had oh, a horrendous no, pole yeah. neck on that day. <laughs> <laughs> and I regretted it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we played uh, Waiting on Saturday. Well, oh, right. And that was Pono, I think, off that first EP. Yeah. yeah. So I also had yeah. a horrendous shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> Just an average shirt. And a ridiculous fringe as well. <laughs> I don't know how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, so, no, no, for that. Um, you also played at the National Stadium, Hamden. And Rook Cup final. Was our, your track was played at half time. So it was. Yeah, when? I thought what you were saying. Yeah. We played it at half time. It's like, it's like <laughs> Robbie's just throwing me under the bus. There's no way he's singing it now. I can't remember that. I think it would have been Don't Stop as well, but. That's class. I can't I can remember that. So <laughs> you said that thing, it's definitely that. <laughs> ah, I don't know even to dig in for that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but did any of you go? I take it no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what Robbie was here. I reckon Robbie would have a lot to say about that. Uh, yeah, I yeah. have no idea. He'd he probably worked that one out himself, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're talking to like three people that don't know much about it. We'll just move on to the next one then. <laughs> Can I do like a Robbie impression? Yeah, like, yeah it's, uh, it's great, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also, on the TV again, um, a lot more coverage with Scottish Water. Scottish Water, yeah. yeah. That was crazy. That was, and that was like pretty lucky as well with like, oh, coming out and the guy that, um, so I think like Scottish Water hired like this, I don't know, some guy to like kind of do the whole advertising campaign. And I think like, you know, when they're doing like these kind of adverts, they're looking for like young bands because like, well, like money wise, they don't have to pay like, <laughs> yeah, loads, loads and loads of money. money. Yeah, yeah. So like, I think he just like typed in like young Scottish bands and like or something in Google and just started like listening through a few things and like found like, oh, and obviously there's like a couple references to like water and yeah, oceans yeah. and stuff. And it was like perfect. And it was just, but it was like totally at the blue, like just like, Neil was just like, I've just got an email that you might be getting this used for like a campaign and stuff. And it was, then it was for just a long like, time too. Yeah. It's still, I, I it's still, it's still, still is. Yeah. It's still like a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so remember we did that, we did, had to go to George Square for like the, in Glasgow, for like the opening <laughs> thing of... <laughs> this is, this is stupid because they... We were like, yeah, we want you to like do like a play like a few songs for it and stuff, and like, oh, well, basically a full set and like for the whole like launch of the campaign, and they're handing out bottles and stuff. It's like a but big, they had like, a full yeah. with a bottle. But they, <laughs> they never cleared it with the council, like to have like live performance. And this is like, I think like the council buildings on like, like George Square. In the morning or something so, like, oh, like, and they like they like paid for everything, like for like for like PA and like gazebo and everything. Yeah. So like it was like Duncan um, from right, Substation Duncan, that did. came and like set everything up. Uh, we set up. They were like, "All right, are you ready to play?" So we played, um, and they were like, "All right, um, we're going to do this, and then we'll get you to play like a few more songs." And we were like, "Okay, cool." And uh, and then suddenly like a council <laughs> council worker comes out and uh, starts talking to them, and we're kind of just sitting like holding instruments <laughs> like. When are we meant to play? And you're playing too loud. And, uh, <laughs> they just go like, oh, like you can't play anymore. And we were like, oh, and they were like, yeah, sorry. So we just, like, we just like turned up, played all, and left. <laughs> it was, like, the quickest gig ever. Home for twelve o'clock. It got home and got a Stevens for lunch. <laughs> and we played like. It, and it could be the worst place for them to do it. It was like literally right outside the council yeah. building. <laughs> it's like a thrill test so or something. Like <laughs> but I like that. It's still getting like coverage on like peak time, like before and after the news. Like, mm. do, do you think yeah. that's helped? She's like sort of build a bigger following because I of think that? so. There's like a lot of times like we've had like we've like played like gigs or like you know or I don't know you know like a playlist or something, and somebody's been like. 
been wondering like where I heard this song before, like right. but it, it was like on a like Scottish Water advert and stuff. Mm-hmm. So then it's and it's a great thing to like say on live as well. Every time we like that song, I'm like, oh, this song's all about water. <laughs> but then like when we played shows down in England, we're always like, oh well. He's like, who likes Scottish water? And everyone's just like silence. And he's like, it doesn't matter. Then. It's like, it doesn't have the same appeal down there. But uh, even more sort of advert campaigns uh, is Adidas. Well, was it Shoe? That was, oh, like, that was uh, for Robbie. Oh, um, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Is yeah. Robbie's girlfriend, Ailey, works with Shoe. Mm. And I, I don't know the ins and outs of it. It was something for, for Ailey. I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> worked out, yeah. Me, yeah. I think she was looking for... I think she was doing the campaign and was looking for music for the, because it was filmed. The advert was filmed in the film Portobello, Portobello arcade. Oh, arcade, yeah. Yeah. And I think it was just looking for tunes for it, and Robbie was like, well, "Yeah, but yeah, I you know what to do." <laughs> like pitched it to like Adidas, and they liked the tune, and that got like played, like in like all the stores. Like there was like had like a kind of big screen at the front of the store and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, like some. Somebody was like down in like London, like sent like a like a video of like one of the like big high streets in London, like with like the the tune playing. I was like, it's pretty cool. Like, oh, yeah. So that was Body, yeah. Body, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Was it? No, it was Body. Yeah. Actually, it was that was got uh, played on Made in Chelsea as well. Eh? It yeah. did. Yeah. How did yeah. that come about? Because I, th- I think I seen a tweet about Robbie being a big fan of that show when he was younger. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, Robbie met one of them, I think, on like you know, on the school trip to Gambia. I think he met one of the stars from Made in Chelsea oh, yeah. at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was like just another case of like just submitting music and like getting lucky. And like you look at, it, to be fair, you look at all the music they play, and it, again, it's like young bands because you don't you don't get like a paycheck from anything. For, yeah. But like, yeah. but that kind of stuff, like as a young band, like getting you know on like a big show like on it's E4 explosion. it's like Twitter's well, really a big that. part of it too because loads of folks sitting watching Made in Chelsea and they're kind tweeting of tweeting like, about it yeah. it's the first song that comes on oh it's like Shazam and stuff so yeah. and, and it's good Made in yeah. Chelsea actually tweet, they tweet out, out song, oh, yeah. a link to the band and stuff so but yeah it's cool and then like from there it was you know they used I think it, it, it was Color Me Good as well Color Me Good and they used Wonderland Wonderland so they, as well once they picked us up once it was like cool that they like Used, used a few more times, yeah. yeah. That's good, like, that. Looking out for us. Oh, cool. Good. Right, so then uh, at the back of that, um, you just brought out Tracy. Um, was that your last sort of independent release before he got signed? It was, yeah. Like that was. Uh, so we did like Is two. That yeah, we did two yeah. songs in a studio in Manchester called Blueprint, and uh, we were wanting like something a bit different, like sound wise. And we were like looking for like a producer, and like I think we just found like somebody like online. It was just like advertised with like services as a producer, and uh, it turned out to be like the person who's now like our label manager, because uh, like it's her own like independent label. So like she did that song, and we got back and we were like, this is like crazy, like you know, like quite poppy and like just stuff that we would never have thought of like making it sound like. So then we sent her like another chunk. Cho- uh, Chong, Chin, <laughs> Chin song, <laughs> and uh, uh, from that, like she loved like the second one we sent, which was missing, and um, so she did that, and then like from there, like I think she actually came over to Scotland uh, when we recorded Chamber, more yeah. stuff in Chamber Studio, and from there was like you know I want to like sign you guys to like my label, and then that was like from there, like so like Tracy was the one that basically did it, like because we found her through releasing Tracy. Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's, that's been that so far, yeah. So then, uh, so Tracy was basically how, he's, how your label manager came to Scotland. How did it come about for you going out to Nashville then? Well, like, so her, like, I mean, she does, like, a lot of stuff. So she's, like, a producer, uh, like, she's, like, an artist in her own right. She's a label like manager. Woman, she? And she's, like, a songwriter too. And so, like, she was... Um, signed to like a publishing company called like Liz Rose Music as a songwriter and she was kind of saying it'd be great if you guys could like come out and write some songs like with us and try like writing with other writers so like we went through and like wrote that's where we wrote all on the first trip there and um Colour Me Good and like basically all the tunes that came after that were mostly wrote with her for like the next like four or five songs and then we all went through like again because um, they wanted to do like a kind of showcase gig um, which was basically like 
they just invited like all the kind of like publishing companies and labels and like Nashville because like it's weird like the houses there it's like it's just like neighborhoods that just look like normal houses but they're all just like like writing studios, writing studios and, yeah. recording yeah. studios but they just look like normal houses, just look like yeah. a like a bungalow yeah. or something <laughs> do you know what I mean free, yeah. yeah it's like it's the weirdest thing but like so we were kind of like going like oh cool, this is sick we're going to be playing a gig in Nashville we're just thinking like well how's anyone going to know like who we are like, you, could, you couldn't like advertise a, it or something eh? you couldn't yeah because the whole visa thing we oh, had yeah. to just say we were going there for like writing and you know just to like jam session then. yeah just like oh, nothing yeah, yeah, just like, oh, yeah. but like when we did the show it was like a, it was like a base was this venue called the basement and it only fits like a hundred people or maybe even less but it was like packed out it was just crazy it was like that last last day of the trip and we've been like doing like going in rehearsing like for like three or four hours a day every day up into it and uh, I was just mad, like being like, well, "How are we like in America right now, playing yeah. like a show to like eight to hundred people like, in a packed out like like venue?" It was just bizarre. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> so then, uh, was it when you were over there that you uh, were writing O and missing, or was it prior to that then? So like, I think the first O was like I went over by myself for the first time and wrote O. Um, and we'd wrote missing before actually. Um, that was that was the the five of us up in like the cottage in on the west coast. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was like. But, that as well. Yeah, but I think it was just like we kind of we'd released Jason. We were kind of looking at what to release when, and uh, Femka was kind of like I think like oh it was like the the next one that we should release, and then like as you it kind of worked out well because obviously like, oh like I think it was kind of like big kick like I kind of kick things off for us in a way um like got on like some big like Spotify playlists and like some big coverage and stuff and then like obviously I had missing after that which just like it got on like the pop list on like Spotify which has got like over like half a million subscribers Man. and it's just like I was like the streams just like skyrocketed like we were just like checking on like the like Spotify for artists app like every day going Refreshing like oh my god like, going up, like, <laughs> like, look at the countries now yeah, it's like yeah. going up like 5,000 6,000 a day like this is like Check insane but so how's, how does that feel then obviously writing it all yourself how does it feel having a song do that well like just it was just it felt great like seeing the streams and stuff but I think it was more like after like because you know now when we play it it's like it's like that and all are like the big ones that like people get like really like sing along to and like we always like finish off with missing now and when we did like the last two shows before lockdown were in like Aberdeen and Edinburgh and we sold them out and we kind of like we were like got into the last song of missing we were like right, let's like tease it in so i just like kind of started playing like the chorus slowly mm. and like you never know if people are going to like sing along or if they're just going to like cheer but like, so I'm like oh and suddenly everyone's just like the whole like venue it was in like aberdeen it was just everyone was just like screaming it back and we we're like this is like crazy like yeah this is the tune like, the tune, like we wrote like <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah you can see all the numbers and all the stats and whatever it is but it's like if you know it needs to kind of like come across live and that's like the telltale sign as a folk you know that's the one that they pick up and sing is that yeah like mm-hmm. you know if, if it's there live then it's that's that's when you're like right we know that's like made it yeah you know? so then uh, how would you say that the writing has changed for like after being signed from sort of the don't stop ep and the waiting on the nation how has, how has it changed since being signed i think when we first started writing the songs it was more like I'd like write the bare bones of a song and bring it in or Robbie would write the bare bones of a song and bring it in. Me and Robbie like never really wrote together until like we were told to. So like when when it got to like missing like <laughs> guy, this guy that we were working with to be fair we were writing Missing and Tracy we were in the cottage and we wrote those all together and it was just like again that was the thing one of us had like an idea but it was like just I think like for Missing it just had like just to start and like riff that bam 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 and like we just like got like a massive sheet of paper and just started writing lyrics ideas and stuff like that and like we that's like a kind of way we do write still at the at the cottage but now like me and Robbie like we'll write together like most of the time and or we'll write with like one or two other writers like if we get a chance to because like it's such a cool experience to do it that way as well like there's songs that 
like I don't know there's just songs that you stuff that you would think maybe is like too cringy or something to put in a song like and then you actually like hear it back and yeah. you're like oh it actually really does work and yeah. and yeah it's just like all these kind of ideas that you wouldn't have had that somebody like else has and I think like there's a lot of people kind of think when you go into like a writing session it's just like somebody just sits and writes a tune for you but it's like yeah. you know like when anytime we go in there they're kind of like what have you got like you know yeah. so we come in with like a verse and a chorus and it's more just kind of like filling in the blanks and like yeah, and just kind of like lyrically just thinking like is there something a bit cooler you could do here and stuff and and yeah so I think that's kind of the now it's like we have like these tunes and so what we're doing just now is like me and Robbie throughout lockdown I think we wrote like 30 35 songs like Jeez. we just like did a write ourselves like the write with the two of us per week and then a write with like Femka each week and then sometimes like an extra one and just now like we basically we the five of us got together and we got like a list of like our 10 favorite songs and like we're just kind of like going through the list and picking out which ones everybody picked as their favorite and yeah. I'm just working on them here at the moment and gonna get into the studio in September and like just like I think like the, the yeah. kind of top three four ones will probably be like the next EP but it's a good way to do it because before we were sitting on like it's like a filter yeah, yeah it's like yeah, it's we had like, like two songs or we had like four songs from the last cottage trip we did and and they're like great songs and but now it's like when you had like another 30 songs it's like now you know you're going to get like the best ones you're not just kind of going like these are the four songs we've got so the other ones we have to do like we have the choice of like we've got like 35 songs and like these 10 are amazing and plus you've got five 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 opinions too yeah five opinions like everyone's kind of everyone's happy and stuff so yeah yeah, yeah. it works out so would you say that doing it that way like picking four or five for an EP is better than trying to push for an album or have you not sort of thought I don't know that? I yeah. think like we, we like albums always on the mind and like it's something yeah. like we'd love to do but it's also just like you know you only get like your first album once and yeah, exactly. you just don't want to like a blind array, yeah. you don't want to yeah, you, yeah. you want to make sure the songs are the best and you also want to make sure that like you've got everything ready to go behind it you know like yeah. in just terms of right like time. yeah like you know just pe- like getting it in all the right places and all the right like people listening to it and making sure actually you know like people are seeing it rather than just like right we've done a few EPs so we should do an album yeah, it's like yeah you want to just make sure it's like when you release the album it's like this is going to be like the big thing and like yeah so would you say it's getting sort of a bigger team behind you and a bigger following maybe to that the company that's it yeah something. like I think like the past year has just been like trying to like build like are following like and, and I feel like we've like we've been getting there especially like ticket sales we've never seen like we never we never sold like out a show in like pre sales before and like especially with, like stuff like PGs like every PG show we did it was like it was re- it was either like just about sold out or maybe sold out but it was like pre sale we'd sold like three tickets it was just like you know <laughs> yeah. just getting everyone piling in <laughs> on the night whereas like that last PGs one we like sold it out like I think like it was like two days before but we were like we don't have to worry about ah, people yeah. coming in now. Like yeah. all the tickets are gone. Like we can just go in, yeah. and yeah, then yeah. like Edinburgh and Aberdeen kind of followed like pretty closely as well. And it was just <laughs> like about spins asking folk to come to the PGS. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come down, come down, come down, come down. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, have a picture on that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just kind of keep building that following and getting the right team and stuff. I think it's just like a big, big thing. Yeah, it's, it's just not rushing it, isn't it? Yeah. Mm because um, one thing that I would say kind of I noticed that helped build a following a bit as well um, is you were named in the top 10 Brits to watch how did that come about because that's like, that, was, that was part of the BAFTA week yeah, yeah. Is it, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. the worst hangover <laughs> that's what that was you've had a few there <laughs> <laughs> Amish has one every Sunday you know, that's, that's, that's me off it boys that's, <laughs> strange, that's such a strange to I, think that's, uh, <laughs> I honestly don't remember how I think somebody again like somebody just like somebody who was involved with somebody had put our name as a suggestion and like when they were talking about it and I think it was like one of like it was like one of the, like, I think the Scottish Sun headlines was like dubbed it's like dubbed as the new Coldplay and I think like oh, it's like American it was like American like BAFTA so I think they kind of like they like like that a lot picked up on it. so yeah. like but um 
It was class, to be fair. It was really cool, but it was, it was like... A, it was a strange experience. It, it was quite really funny because you had, like, some of the other Brits who I know me were like, Georgia Smith was one of them. And, like, <laughs> and we were like... She's a top, top, top ten. And we were like, we're, like, like, we were like staying in, like, a... It's just like, really like dirty, dirty Airbnb <laughs> and, uh, right outside London, and like, we're like, how George, act, though, like Georgia Smith couldn't be there because she was on tour with Stormzy. It's like, you know, like, a, <laughs> yeah. like it's cool to be here, but like, I think there's like quite a big difference in some of the, <laughs> some of the people's progress. Knowing, knowing how much is too much free wine to take <laughs> uh, right, was a bit a big issue. But it was good. It was it was good. I, uh, yeah, it was more we didn't know what to expect. Yeah. We knew it was going to be like a big event. And there's big names there, um, and then you like pitch up to them. And you, what was the what was the hotel called again? This hotel is like the most outrageous hotel you've ever seen. Name and shame up. You've got to. Oh, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't even remember, remember the name of it. So, <laughs> so we went. Yeah, no, and we went. We kind of pitched up. Just in like a cab, like limos coming into the, the driveway. They're saying, "We're going to move up." We're going to move up. It's like we went up in limos and we signed up in a Prius, man. <laughs> <laughs> An electric Prius. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you like, go downstairs, and we knew it was going to be like some kind of red carpet thing, and we were like, "Oh Jesus!" So we like, kind of just we've had a couple of drinks before, we kind of gone down. It's so basically the basement of this hotel. It's a huge function, like ballroom. It's not a basement, though. Is it? No, <laughs> it's a function. It's, it's in the cellar. Thing, <laughs> and we went, we walked Taste down, the and we were sitting there, and it was just like the rumble from this room, and you see like this red carpet, and literally like. It could have been uh, like seventy five photographers and like press people from like everywhere. <laughs> Where's the door again? Yeah, <laughs> walk out. But, um, yeah that was an amazing night. Uh, and yeah, it's just such a cool thing. And then the Variety magazine because they did it kind of in, with the yeah because it was with it was Newport Beach Film Festival for in association with BAFTA and then, um, Variety magazine, which is the big uh, US oh, yeah. magazine. And then we got this magazine that you open it up and it's had yeah, the big like full picture and like a double page spread yeah and it was yeah was they were just sick. singing their really really cool it was just because yeah. uh, you're, you're saying about Georgia Smith but there was like a few other names big names I've got uh, Simon Pegg uh, Thomas Brody Sandstar and Jason Isaac are the three I've got down yeah. <laughs> Andy Serkis Andy Serkis Andy Serkis, Andy Serkis. Yeah. Yeah. Amish uh, ended up outside wrestling with the guy that runs like the Irish film festival <laughs> <laughs> this guy still, called uh, good this man. guy called Zeb Moore me and, like, Zeb, me and we, Zeb we, Moore. <laughs> we came out <laughs> like pals. ready to get like him at home and Hamish and this like this 40 year old man <laughs> are just wrestling on the ground like play wrestling and they're like what are you doing and he's like it's fine it's just a laugh and we're like oh, yeah, okay <laughs> this is, uh, he's, he's quite small as well Zeb's a man Zeb's a man because I was going to say did you meet any of them have you got any stories but there you go this one <laughs> well, me, me and Robbie ended up going I can't remember how, how it came about but Robbie was talking to loads of folk and the guy I, be, I believe it was the guy that was like the the sort of head organiser or something of the BAFTAs was like we're going to this rooftop party late, like later on if you if in the band would like to come and I can't remember you guys went or you just wanted to go back or something yeah. anyway, it ended up it was me and Robbie were like yeah we'll, we'll go <laughs> and then got bundled into this car and went I, think, I couldn't even tell you where this place was and then straight in this elevator and whatnot, we went up and it was like it was like something like the, the, the films and that kind of huge like bar and that and you saw like the, the, the the, what do you call it, the Sky. skyline and everything, yeah. free bar, and Robbie's doing his best to like, like do the professional chat and like, yeah, <laughs> talking away, and I'm just spewing everywhere. I really made much of myself, and uh, I think Robbie saved it with his with the, the chat, but uh, <laughs> the, the flight home the next day was absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I just had a wee side story about Michael and Thomas Brody saying that he's oh, he's a lovely and chat. Down in the chocolate factory. <laughs> <laughs> was like, that was the me. <laughs> it was the guy, like, he looks quite similar. I was just saying, oh, I went to you, I was like, what are these ones just going to melt into the ground? Oh. <laughs> oh, dude, why is oh, that? There's just no coming back for that. Yeah, yeah. Just, no, <laughs> like, have a good night, mate. <laughs> I'm going to give an Uber back to my Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. obviously, yeah, winning that award and then obviously winning the film press, it's a uh, it's a bit of a jump. So how does it feel going from sort of your local newspaper to something as big as that? That's a it was it was pretty scary. Like we didn't know what to expect. Like and obviously we saw like some of the other names and like even in just like the 
like grits to watch kind of thing like it's just like right there's some like and I was like looking them up and like it was like actresses and like like directors and stuff and all these people were like doing like incredible stuff so it felt like really like it felt great to be like associated with these kind of people and also you're just kind of thinking like sure. like like why like why <laughs> what's just going on like yeah like, like it's just like <laughs> yeah yeah it was just a bit mad really <laughs> but i guess for these for these people it's like a other like it's kind of normal to them, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they'll probably on... stuck out like sore thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll put on their suit, they'll have a couple of glasses of wine, and go back in their car, or right, whatever. Yeah, and we, we, we were just like, look, we're just gonna. Yeah, we were speaking to one guy in like a Gucci Aye. suit, and he was a fully that. I mean, must have been thousands of pounds worth of clothes he was wearing. He was <laughs> rocking up in like a River Island. <laughs> I had like my prom suit jacket and a pair of dickies on. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> but I uh, so the back of that, um, you released Body in twenty. Um, is there any sort of stories mm. or like inspirations behind uh, most of the tracks? I don't know. It's, I think we wrote we wrote those ones uh, like two days before we were going into like the studio. It was pretty quick actually. Those ones. Like, usually yeah. we take a lot more time, and those ones I think there's like when Femco was actually over. And uh, she was like, well, maybe we can like write some songs and then we'll go into the studio. So it was like a bit of like a hectic week. So we always kind of wrote them. So I did just jump in. When you're talking, <laughs> pretty, pretty rude, but <laughs> when we're talking about the, 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 writing them fast, I remember especially for Body going into the studio with like a bare bare minimum and actually writing parts as we record. Yeah. Well, for me personally, guitar wise, like I remember I had like next to nothing for the track, and then when it actually came to write time for guitars and that we're just almost like writing it as we're recording as were, this sort of thing i think it was like four, yeah. like four days in total or five days in total and like two days were spent writing and we wrote yeah body 20 and symmetrical which was on that ep as well and then it was like i think like the net the day before the studio we went into like a just like a rehearsal room in edinburgh with our um basically just tried to like arrange it and then it was like, right, got it, took a voice memo and we're like, right, see you in the studio tomorrow. And it was just like, it was cool though, because obviously just like kind of learning, almost like learning the song with like in a recording studio with every amp under the sun and effects pedal, like, it was like quite, yeah, it's like you kind of like, sometimes it's like, you know, not good to be set in uh, setting ideas, like, and you just, you can just find like the best, like kind of creative stuff. And like, I guess like body and 20 as well, they were like, pretty heavy like compared to like missing and tracy and stuff yeah. like that like especially 20 mm. um drop d <laughs> yeah. drop d baby Those days. <laughs> no so yeah it was just pretty quick but i think they turned they turned it like they're two like kind of big like fan favorites anyway i think like body especially like people mm. really really like are big on that one mm. So what would you say, like, sort of inspired just to go sort of down a heavier route then? Because obviously you've done quite a lot of sort of pop and sort of tracks. I think just to, like, show diversity, really. Yeah, like, uh, I think Especially if you've got songs like Symmetrical and the same... On the same <laughs> yeah. Movie, yeah. I mean, like, one acoustic guitar, pretty much. And I think it was just, like, just like, that whole EP was, like, you know, I guess it was, like... Obviously, it was all coming like the first few like releases with with Femka's label, and like from that, like we got onto like Spotify playlists and stuff. And I think it was just more about like kind of showing like the music world, kind of like what what we can do and what we are, and just not sticking ourselves into like one category. One category. And like I think that's like great now because even still, like we just find the right sound for the song, but we still like obviously we're not like we we want to make it sound like us and like we'll know if it doesn't feel right mm -hmm. but you know it doesn't have to be like totally heavy but or it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be totally poppy but we've just got that like great find that balance got like a good balance yeah nice one yeah, yeah. so then at the back of that um you've played at out with festival uh, which transpired to be michael's last gig with you and mm -hmm. um, we talked a bit a, a bit about it on our last podcast then um but I just wanted to see like what your guy's side of it was because obviously he said that you had said to him like you don't seem like you're enjoying it as much like so how did that come about then? It was just I think like if you I, for like one thing for him I think was touring a lot was just like 
He likes his home comforts, Michael. Yeah. He's like, you know, and he, he yeah. was like quite honest about like, yeah, he's like, you know, and because you have to like stay in like places that are on a budget. Yeah. They're not going to be like the nicest Airbnbs and you're like sharing a bed. It's like two to a bed and stuff. And like he would just be like, I'm like not enjoying this kind of thing. And we were like, just, we just, totally fine though. Yeah, we just, yeah. we like, wanted them like, to, we wanted them to like just be honest. But we want, we, I think for a while we just wanted to like try and like, reignite like his passion and yeah. we just like got to the point where like you know it's just like we're just basically like dragging him yeah. on a leash yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh <laughs> like, we just think we sat him down on the or we sat down together on the day of the out with gig and we were like you know like yeah you don't seem too happy and like we don't want to fall out with you like because we're all like so close so we we're like why don't we just like go out with a bang like and call this like last gig and he was just like I think that's like exactly what I want to do. Like so, it was, and then from then, like, so like, we see him all the time, and like, yeah. it's like nothing. You're I'm playing, you're playing kind of... on like Kings Club tracks and yeah. stuff. Like it's like everyone's like, oh, happy with each other now. I think it was just like the right, the right thing. It was to the right, do. yeah. It was the right time for it. And it was like a good send off as well. That gig. Would you say it was important to do it at a hometown gig? Yeah. I think so. It works yeah, out, like, that was that was his big thing. He, he, he loved like. He loves playing like Dunfermline shows. Yeah, he loved like he's just not in the back. <laughs> he's no like on the planet anymore. Yeah, yeah. He, he loved, loved it. He, he loved. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, Sorry, Michael. Yeah, no, that, was, that was his big thing. Like any like the PJ shows, and the, I think he played so many. He's like a PJ's veteran by the end of it. I just think. Like, to do like a big hometown gig was like the send off he needed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we again we also we also speak to see him a lot. And but I also feel that the just bef- up until that when there was gigs that Michael couldn't make, uh, when you're talking about the transition to Reese, was the fact that when Michael couldn't do gigs, we had Reese was filling in, mm. and it, when it turned out when we realised that Michael couldn't do it anymore, it almost seemed like the most natural progression was yeah. to get Reese involved because it didn't it, it never seemed like a the worst fear for us was having was like guy like, didn't oh, feel like a part of like yeah, yeah. No. auditioning like the like guys and stuff and like yeah. having like no sort of previous background with them at all but having Reese was just like it, it just seems such so natural and it never seemed like it like it doesn't seem like he's never been in the band if you know what I mean mm. like he's just so he was, he was your first choice like yeah yeah without a doubt there wasn't was any question eh? it was just yeah. sort of like you need, to, you need to do it. <laughs> you have no choice. <laughs> what was his view on it once? Did you approach him with that? Yeah. We were playing in Aberdeen um, on one of the gigs that Michael couldn't do. And uh, we pretty much just asked him, like, like obviously, because we used to play in Mizzou at the time mm-hmm. as well, we we're just saying, like, uh, we'd love to have you playing with us uh, full time, but obviously, you need to work it out. Playing, he was like for for a good long while. He was, he was and he did a really fucking good job at it. Playing two yeah. bands at once, yeah. and uh, he did it for a good while until he, and he even uh, stopped playing Mizzou. But it was an easy uh, transition for sure. For uh, yeah, it was, Michael Levin. I think it was it was making sure that there was no kind of like. I mean, we've we've been friends with Malaysia for a while, and it was making sure that you know it was no force and you yeah. know it was all done like totally trying to keep everything in good blood yeah, yeah. definitely right. definitely and uh, you know no and, beef no, no beef no <laughs> beef because it does <laughs> yeah it could maybe be you know conceived as that but it was uh, like ultimately it was Reese's choice in the end and, and that's just it's the way it worked out and we're we're you know, glad for it and it's just the way it's, it's just happened. sent him a thousand pounds and it was just the easiest thing really actually. <laughs> <laughs> new money <laughs> but aye, so then at the back of that um, it was not long after his release Colour the Good then it was a couple of days after that with yeah was that can't be long yeah. I think you're right yeah, yeah so and that was like sort of the, the jump back to sort of you the, do some good digging back there oh, really. I appreciate like, that, 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 that I even know half the stuff <laughs> <laughs> the podcast will be about five minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no joke <laughs> but aye so then at the back of that he's released Cover Me Good uh, a few days after Out With um, then he's released Stereo Black and Wonderland which was sort of the jump back to sort of the, the indie pop vibe yeah um, how did the writing process go for them? Was um, sort of the record label more involved? Yeah, that was like Robbie went over. Um, so obviously, I'd been over once by myself, and 
Robbie went over that time and I just like I had like a bunch of song ideas that I like sent over to them and they worked on them and Wonderland was one that like we'd actually worked on before as well and we had like we had like the song and then just needed like tweaks so like like Robbie had some tweaks here and there and uh, um, yeah so that was like again that was like kind of like full with with the label like second DP with them um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else to say? But yeah, but I uh, so I'm saying Wonderland. Like I've seen those tracks like they were straight after each other. Wonderland is probably about a year after he's played that last gig with Michael. Yeah, yeah. Mm. was was it like sort of paying homage to the fact that he's had not played in Dunfermline for so long? So obviously he's tie in sort of links yeah. to Dunfermline. Yeah, the album, the, uh, the single. Yeah, the, album, like the Abbey album, and stuff. Yeah. I think it was just like. Just like I think, like we obviously we, like the Dunfermline music scene. I think is like pretty special. Like all the bands that play and like PJs just bouncing like every week and like we you know it's like it's been like the scene that we've kind of grown up in and like when we were like starting off like we got like taken in like and you know you know it's like it's, it's people like kind of help people like grow. There's, there doesn't seem to be anyone trying to like push each other down in it yeah. and then like obviously just like like. Big country is like a huge influence on like all of us, especially Hamish. <laughs> um, so it was just yeah, like we thought like why not have a song that kind of like will resonate like try like yeah we were like we didn't want to just be like just singing Dunfermline yeah, you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. just like for, for for people that are you know from Dunfermline or like no big country and stuff just kind of have that kind of like can see yeah. that like you know like there's like resonance and stuff. Yeah. Having that one tune that kind of just relates back to yeah. Because I mean, there's uh, there's a few solos you've done live that are. Ah, I, I, I like to. I like to <laughs> he always uh, just play the chance with the <laughs> solo. Uh, Jamie gave me permission to do that. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> but would you say that sort of like bands like Big Country and that have inspired not just that single but your band in general? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, like I think. Yeah. Uh, we've all listened to them like. For years. For years, and yeah, it's just. I don't think it's ever been. Like a like a kind of influence that like we're sitting listening to like their tune and going like let's write a tune like that, but more so that it's just that it's like there's always just bits in there like even before we like released Wonderland, I remember we played in a it was like this festival called Dot to Dot and it was like three cities and we played in uh, Bristol and like I don't I don't even know, I think we probably played Wonderland but. The guy, uh, this guy came up and spoke to Hamish oh, afterwards, the and, he, yeah, called, and he was like, just like, oh, like, you really re- reminded me of, like, Big Country at some points and stuff, and, like, Hamish was well, like, I've got a tattoo, like, <laughs> yeah, this huge like, influence, it's like, a lot that, like, comes up a lot without us, like, it's not like we're trying to, like, yeah. Yeah. push that, but, yeah. yeah. But, uh, there's, you're jumping ahead of me there, you, you've obviously seen the notes. Um, oh, I saw the script. <laughs> <laughs> I did uh, my notes too. <laughs> <laughs> Doing your own research. So, um, April tour in uh, 2019 was Edinburgh, Aberdeen, Glasgow, but then in May he's done Dot to Dot, which was, um, like you were saying, three back to back for the festival. Yeah. Um, it was big crowds for all of them, so how does it feel like? jumping from huge Scottish crowds to then packed venues in England as well. It's like really sick and, and what was great about that festival was that like obviously it was like a lot of kind of bands and like a similar up and coming stage and you know sometimes you know if you just play like a festival and you might not get like the best billing and you just you know you might not be like the best crowd and stuff but with that they kind of like they kind of switched it about with venues and like time slots so like the the Bristol venue we played was like 600 cap venue and obviously because it's these like city festivals it was like full and we played at like half four or five o'clock yeah. it was just like a great time for us but then like I think I think like Manchester was like probably the quietest one and that was like kind of like a venue that was a bit out of the way but it was like still a good crowd there and the people that were there were enjoying it and then we played like the Rough Trade record store for Nottingham again that was like the two worst in the afternoon. You'll ever yeah, get. Yeah, it was, <laughs> <terrible>. <laughs> was terrible. But that was like again, it was packed out because these like city festivals are just so great because people, it's like you know, it's like twenty quid a ticket and like you're getting like close to a like, hundred bands at times yeah. and like yeah. people are just gonna go because they love music and stuff and you just go like oh let's just try this venue and get a pint and then they'll just like end up staying and you'll have 
like people that were going like I didn't have a clue who you were when you started playing but like I really enjoyed you mm. and I'm like gonna follow you and it's like such a good way of like building like a fan base picking up followers and, and fans and stuff too yeah. for sure so uh, how's it a rough road in then? <laughs> oh man, this, this and we we often uh, come up against this is when you you've got venues in sort of like proper like city centres. You can get those electric bollards come up, oh. right? You've got to phone some council dude to get to get to turn them down, so you can get the van in to load in. But we for some reason we couldn't do that, so we had to park the van and literally like I don't know how like four or five hundred yards away from the venue. <laughs> And like we've got like all the flight cases and guitars and pedal balls rolling them on a cobbled path <laughs> all the way yeah. to the venue, and then you're playing on the fucking top floor. <laughs> well, so you've got to take it all the way up the top. And I was just boker, man. And plus, that these, was the last day as well. So I think everyone was just like, so it was a rapid time. Too, well. eh? like, oh yeah, yeah once you played, it's like, like get the get hell out of the stage <laughs> now, like, get out of this building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sucks <laughs> waiting through crowds of people as well yeah yeah there wasn't even a, a back mm-hmm. entrance you had to go through the crowd to the stage. I think I've only said like the most that whole weekend it's like sorry guys can I just squeeze past you <laughs> <laughs> it's slowly less and less plight as, as it goes <laughs> <laughs> just use it as like a big barricade man <laughs> but you're saying obviously but the, the city festival has been good for like um, picking up new fans out with and the is obviously really good for that mm. Um that ended up being your first on family show release uh, last year. Um, so how yeah. did that... Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I thought it was before that, but you're right. You're right. No. So, uh, like, what was You've that? You've done his homework, Gregor. But so, like, how did it feel? Like, what was that, like, antis- anticipation for that? Because obviously it was, you were in Lorenzo's, which obviously isn't really... A guitar band sort of venue. Yeah, mm-hmm. but was, you still managed. To I think it like out. we were excited to like play like uh, that like kind of top floor bit. Like we've seen like like Shambolics had sold it out before, and like I think it was like I know there was like a the kind of done fan when like music festival like, like years before, and I'd seen like that was one of the main. Uh, we played yeah. actually we'd played there before yeah like years ago as like it was like when we were just starting and it was like. I can't remember the way we got it, but it was through like me still being at school and doing like a kind of course with PJs that we got like a support slot on that festival. And it was like Embrace were playing. And we played like that on the kind of main stage in Lorenzo's, but it was like one in the afternoon and it was like totally dead. But it was like just fun playing it. And then yeah. we saw like, like I, saw, I watched like Embrace afterwards and I thought this would be like Oscar a cool, on that cool place too. to play. Yeah, and um, sure. So like actually playing it was like great, and then just like having like Reese like Reese is like first guy, and he was like anxious for it to be like a a great great show, and then he killed it that night though because he played with us, finished our oh, show, and then ran down the stairs and jumped on the kit to like the zoo. Man, He's an like animal. But I so then um, at the well during that I was going to say the day after, but it was during that set he's announced your return to PJs since twenty eighteen I think it was. Yeah, right enough. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been. Not all the way that you need to have two gigs right at the end of the year. And we've always got to that point with playing. Like we often found that playing PJs is always great, but then when you played it, like it was always if you played it maybe like I don't know three or four times a year, you'd get like the first one would be like packed out, yeah. and then for the next one, for like oh, I saw him like a month or two ago, and you, you see the cl- the, the clouds. <laughs> crowd, crowds are getting like like fewer and fewer so we thought if we, if we like take like a break like build up like a little bit of hype so it's like yeah. oh mm. it's been however long it was then again, we'll, back to it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, which worked great yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. bye so then um, after that he's released Stay which obviously was another slow song but it was uh, where your slow songs before you'd done them as like sort of a track in the EP but this was like your sort of first single yeah. Um, what was what was your thinking behind that rather than having it like it sort of slid into the EP? We just, I think we just went look at you. We always just loved it, man. I remember uh, we went to the cottage and uh, we were just again just to write some new stuff and um, it was like actually I had to <laughs> start <laughs> someone laugh. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> uh, I, I had a verse chorus kind of thing and we were like, this is pretty cool. And this was the first time we were right, like had Reese up at the cottage with us as well. And um, 
it's just it was just one of those ones where like, I think like Reese was coming later in the day, so like we got there like kind of at like lunchtime or something and like just set up and started like playing straight away and then Reese got there and it was the kind of thing where we just kind of I just like played the song for him like on the guitar and I was like this is what we can kind of hear and he's kind of like I mean he's he's super quick at just picking stuff up and he's like right yeah got it and we just played it and it just like it was just like one of those songs where it was just like wow like that's like already there and like that was like the first time playing it so like as soon as we wrote that we were like that has to be one that we're going to go record and like it's got to be like the first single for yeah. us so was that like the very first track that we should record on then yeah uh, was it was it was yeah stay so he, like he was like i think everyone was just like really like buzzed about it because like it was like first one that he drummed on and he was just like dying to get it out and every, yeah it was just like all felt so good about it when we when we like first wrote it up there Nice one, yeah. So then, at the back of that, you've done a wee bit of tour with Only Some. Yeah. How did that come about? Uh, so this was like we played a a London show um, with this like it's a promotions company called Close Up, and it's just like it's this young guy called like, Alex who runs it all, and he's like really great for like kind of helping like younger bands, and he had this like this like Swedish band, like Swedish like oh they were called they were called Disco Funk or something they were called. Yeah. Yeah. Sure was it disco funk? Yeah, yeah disco it was funk. something like. Um, so we went down and supported them, and uh, one of the other bands that like did a lot of these close-up shows were Only Son, and we were like, if you go on, you know, like Spotify related artists, right. we were like each other's on each other's like. So he just like came down to see us and like was like chatting to us afterwards and was like, um, just kind of like saying like, you know, oh, we're like really artists, I like, love the show and stuff, and kind of got like to know him from there, and then. After that, I think he was kind of saying like, "Oh, we want to get you at like our, like our hometown show, like our London show, sorry, to like support." And then I think we were just kind of like, "Well, why don't we just like come and play with you for the whole tour?" Because we like had a bit of like time, and he was like, "They were like, yeah." So I think it was like seven or eight dates like across England. And it was like a lot of fun actually, and the London show was great. Cause I think that was like. Two fifty to three hundred people like they sold out the show and like it was like a great crowd like and we played like Birmingham with them as well which like turned out to be like a that was mad an absolutely mental night like it was like this it was even in the middle of nowhere that kind place, of thought hey. you got the place and it was like you know you just like drive into like a venue something you think this is like pokey as hell like <laughs> there's, no one's even gonna turn up and like I think we all just had like really like bad like thoughts of how it's gonna go yeah let's just like bed. yeah. <laughs> And uh, and like when it came to like coming on, it was just like the place was just like full. Like and it was this band called like Flares that are from Birmingham that were supporting them, and they're just like they just like, they play like mate, Birmingham and like so Wolverhampton and stuff. I think they're all like sixteen, but like they just got this like huge following. <laughs> so they just all like stayed for us like after they like I think they were for support. And it was just great. Like it was just like kind of standout show, but like, it was the like Castle on a and Falcon that's Tuesday night or something. Yeah. Um, we just yeah. weren't expecting it to be like yeah. a memorable show. It was great. <laughs> it was. So uh, good to uh, sort of build a bit more of a following there. Now. Definitely, and just play some places that we'd never played, like um, Southampton. Was that so was that the first that. night? <laughs> it was like Southampton. I think it was like. Like eight, <laughs> nine hours or something. Yeah, not, oh, not yeah. worth the drive. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, it was like a, it was a quiet show, but but yeah, just like I mean, you, even at these shows, there's always like one or two people there and that might like really enjoy. And it was like a, like, and there was like a couple like people there that like really loved it, like loved us after that. And like, yeah. mm. I mean, those shows it can be like pretty disheartening to play, but it's the kind of thing where if there's a Two or three people that are you never know gonna are going to enjoy yeah, yeah, yeah. it, then they can like kind of tell their friends like I saw this band like it's just just got like play all every show you can get really. So a uh, good way to round off that tour, uh, announcing your biggest support shows. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so how did that come about then? That was uh, sorry, I should say for catfish in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoever doesn't know, but aye. So how did that come about? Uh, Twitter DM. <laughs> Obviously, uh, all the things we uh, <laughs> we've never done. So like that whole tour, we'd like we were, we were just like let's do this as cheap as we can. So like the places we stayed were honestly one of the most shocking places I've ever stayed in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Man, Liverpool, in we <laughs> stayed next to Goodison. Is it is that the Everton Goodison Stadium? Park, yeah, yeah. staying next to Goodison Park, and um, when we were playing in Liverpool, and it was like <laughs> Neil was like, right, this is like. 
this is the address and it was like like a nail salon <laughs> <laughs> and like had to like knock on the door <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and, like, it was like people getting their nails done there was like sunbeds and you had to walk through like this construction bit then like up into these like uh, you know <laughs> 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 uh, and like every, I think everyone was just like I don't know people were just getting a bit tired and grumpy and the next morning he was like got this like like DM just saying like are the guys available Thursday, Friday? Like, as in, like, five days away. I mean, this one sentence, and exactly how he said that that's how oh, the But guys. what was it? He looked who had sent it, and it's, he'd seen that it was, uh, it was... He was like, I'd seen that name before, and he was just like, I'm pretty, like, certain that that's, like, the Catfish Tour Manager. And we were all going, like, oh! Like, thinking <laughs> that he's just like, yeah, we've got it, boys! <laughs> and uh, he's just like, you know, like, he's... It's probably going to be nothing like just don't get your hopes up kind of thing. An after party or something. We were kind of thinking like, but even if it was that, it would have been like the coolest thing ever too. We were like, it's just like, obviously that's like, you're just trying to like, that's all you can think about. We literally pitched up to the gig when this message came in for loading. We did the full loading, like had dinner, all in silence. Everyone just said (laughs) Played the gig. and The whole uh, time was like, catfish. (laughs) Played the gig and, and Neil was like, can I get away with you outside? And just kind of looked a bit like, kind of bummed out. And we were like, everyone's like, ah, oh, he's just going to like, so that's like, just going to maybe say it was like, I, I don't know. We didn't know what it was, but it was just kind of like, and he goes like, it's not what you think. And everyone's like, ah, oh, and he's like, but he's going to be sporting catfish on the <laughs> radio. I was like, go mental. Reese like, lobbing like a bottle across the like street as a police car. Like, <laughs> so I was going like, oh, Gregor starts crying. Channel's open. It was like, actually, five days. This was five days before the gig. We had mm. five days to prepare. It was less, it was a Sunday. And then when did you? It was like three days before, actually. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it was Sunday, just like uh, Sunday or Thursday. Yeah. So I was like just checking my rota for work. Like, <laughs> can I get <laughs> this can off? Cover me. Yeah. Which, <laughs> luckily, like they were my days off, but uh, it was yeah, it was just like the craziest way to like find out. And the whole time we were kind of like, this is gonna be like a some sort of like prank or something. <laughs> like, was like, up, psych. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was just like the craziest way to find out something like that. You'd think like that kind of stuff would all be like emails and yeah, be managers and agents, yeah. and it's like a Twitter DM, like, what are you up to Thursday? It's like a message running with the pipe. Not <laughs> much, man. What about you? Like, <laughs> it's just going to do PJ's karaoke, but <laughs> feeling pretty tired. <laughs> we have to give up on this. <laughs> But uh, like, did you know like what venues they were playing? Because I mean, well, yeah. Neil looked it up like, and he was like, oh, so he's Neil's a big yeah. catfish fan, like, yeah. so he knew, and he was just like, he was like, oh my god, it's like, it's just like arenas, like, <laughs> what, like this this venue that we'd played in Liverpool was like leaking, and it was like forty fifty cap or something. It was tiny, man, like really really small, and like. It was just like, biz- like four pound for a cold tin of Budweiser. Yeah, it was just like, just like, <laughs> it's naked. It was just like, you, you just can't really comprehend, like, can you? I'd, I've never even, I'd never been to like an arena gig before, so like, I didn't really know what I was no in scale, for. Like, yeah, it was just like, and obviously, I think like, with like the Aberdeen one being the first show, like, let's say like, I think they're not. I mean, they're like similar size Aberdeen, Glasgow, but the Aberdeen one is like just goes out rather longer, than you know yeah. that hydro is like round. Yeah, yeah. So like when you well, when we got up to start loading stuff on, you were just like, this is so daunting. Like, oh, you can't, like, see. You couldn't see it. Duncan. He was, like, doing the sound. And I was like, I can't see him. Like, <laughs> yeah. like this is scary. There's my hand point. Obviously, I literally <laughs> stage, plug myself in. Stage, <laughs> when that stage like that, it's like, you get a monitor engineer to the left that does all your kind of on-stage monitor. <laughs> he was just like, like Duncan! <laughs> <laughs> Go turn my guitar up! <laughs> he was saying so no, about... I mean, your amp being turned on when we had picked up so we took like those three days were like mad preparation like we're in here for like hours we were getting our guitars all all uh, service and everything like that and i remember picking up uh the van and the amp from my amp from here i'm sure with neil and rolled my van into that into the, the moved my van rolled the amp into the back of the van and me and neil went around a roundabout and i heard my amp go bang Aww. and i was like fuck 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 and when I got home, I turned it on. It was like snap, crackle, pop, like this. I was like, I've got to use this tomorrow. But it kind of kicked in. 
So I was like, right, it says it's, it's working, it's working. So I got it up to the, the Aberdeen show and it was like, you saw the daunting big, big void on front of you. And I turned my amp on, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, come on, surely, surely. Uh, all like those catfish texts going, oh, that doesn't sound healthy. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so what I had to do is kept it on. Like, I don't know what time we were sound checking that, like, I don't know, like three or something. The amp was on from like three o'clock in the afternoon. No one turned it off. I made sure no one turned it off until we went on stage just so it wouldn't have that. We <laughs> 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 come the speakers, man. It's, oh, it's, it's a terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Terrifying, man. It's part of the intro music. <laughs> same, same as God the next day I had no time to get it fixed so again it was like uh, it was turned on for like six and a half hours <laughs> and then with Aberdeen as well we get on oh, like, you think like it's like nerve wracking enough and you walked on and like as soon as you see, like we're all kind of like you walk on the lights come on like crowd starts cheering and Robbie's like you know trying to do like it's kind of like Freddie Mercury thing so he like kneels like in front of the like kick drum waiting for everything to kick in and Reese is like, right, get the laptop on in. To, like, <laughs> to like trigger like the first sample. Uh, but <laughs> it's Gregor's laptop, but like Re Re neither Reese or Gregor had thought to like plug in the charger <laughs> for the MacBook. So like Reese is kind of just going like, Gregor, 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 <laughs> like try to shout him. Gregor's like coming over. Everyone's just kind of like almost just like playing like musical statues or something. <laughs> and it's like luckily it just like came like right back Malato, home. Malato just died like totally <laughs> packed in, and there's just oh. eight thousand people looking Stoony. at you. <laughs> and I was that? just like, oh, I mean, Malato was like, is it good? Like, I don't have it now. I was like six years old, and I was just like, this is gonna take like three or four minutes to actually <laughs> to get to it and then boot up. And then I was just sitting there. Like, I was waiting for Robbie to start charming. telling jokes or something to pass. <laughs> 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 I was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you're a knock knock joke. <laughs> 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 there's there's just... people just throwing shit out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think Robbie said at one point, just let's just go without the samples. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no it was like a good, like, three, four minutes. No, as well. it wasn't. Honestly, it was no, because I've seen, I like, I've, 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 honestly, it was like three or four minutes. Like, because at the moment, because you think we get on. And then you've like you're obviously not like paying attention to Reese. Reese is sitting trying to get your attention. Then you have to put your bass off, like go like turn it on and stuff. Then come back. <laughs> well, and we're just getting, sitting there. Robbie's like, <laughs> Robbie's like Robbie said he was just getting like mega cramp in his calves from so like, <laughs> like squatting down like for like three minutes. Must have tuned my guitar a million times with <laughs> Pin a tune just to tune it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean Th those are like the biggest venues in Scotland. Well, music arenas in Scotland. That's yeah. fifteen thousand for P and J, and then twelve thousand for the yeah. like crazy stuff. That's like mental, right? Like, because I, yeah. I was up at the one in Aberdeen, and it was like mobbed when I came in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like there was well over like ten thousand there when yeah. you were on. Yeah. Like, obviously, did, could you see it like at all? No. At points, like with the lights and stuff, like, and there was like points where like, you know, like. Uh, we were trying to like just get people jumping and you could just see like crowds just like oh. jumping up and it down. And silly. It generally did look like liquid at one point. Okay, just cause the, the, How much the, did you have to drink? The, <laughs> <laughs> the, like, just the amount of heads just oh, all, it, it, it was okay, bizarre with the light. Yeah. It, it, it felt just mad. like a green screen like almost. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. just like, you, you can't, can't so expose that. Like, you can't prepare yourself for yeah. it. Yeah. Just, Imagine you get all that preparation, uh, preparation and, and then you're just a bit like, we were sitting here rehearsing like the night before and I'm sitting there going oh because we're all arguing of course like, it's just an absolute <laughs> nightmare of practice everyone's like no you're, just, you're doing that wrong you're doing that. and then I just came out of the practice going I don't even know if I want to do this <laughs> <laughs> you know? but it's like yeah all that and then half an hour and it was done and it was like right we've got like hydro the next night and it was like yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. even better like yeah. I mean it wasn't better it was like just as good like I think it's just because it's more central yeah, more it's central like, venue it's like yeah. uh, it's we played that again and it was like half an hour done uh, and then it was like like met them that night as well and it was just like I, like, I sat and had a beer with them and we like this is like the craziest thing ever and then I got up at like seven the next morning, got on the X fifty five to Edinburgh, and went to work. And it was like the worst day of my life. Like, <laughs> people just going, "How was that then?" <laughs> and I was just like, "Yeah, it was. It was pretty good, but I don't want to be here right now. It's like serving lattes and cappuccinos all day." <laughs> but that's like such a buzz. Like, how does it feel like going back to sort of the normality? Oh, you just like you just wanted, yeah. It was just, it was just honestly like I've I've never had like 
felt like so high and alive to just like waking up the next day going like you know like day return to Edinburgh please like, like, <laughs> just like this is like I, I just I wish I could just go back to sleep and just like relive it like but it just drives you to be like you like we want that again yeah. so like we're just like Working. we're just working and working and obviously like after that we had like Edinburgh and Aberdeen shows that like sold out um like before we played them and Edinburgh's like notoriously like it's like notorious for being like quite just a still crowd like so when we played Aberdeen and it was like the cra like crazy crazy night um at tunnels and when we got to Edinburgh we were like I just kept saying like guys remember it's like it's not going to be like the same as last night because you know, like Edinburgh crowds just don't go mental and stuff. And when we were like setting our stuff up, it was like packed out venue, and there was just like it was almost like silence. Like you could probably like drop like a fifty pence piece, and everyone would like go and like. <laughs> so we were kind of like, oh, like yeah, it's just, like at least it's sold out. And then like as soon as we started playing, like everybody went mental <laughs> then as well. So like, and then obviously lockdown happened like straight after. Oh. So like we're just like driving to like as soon as we start playing shows again to just bigger and bigger and better shows like and just try and get some more support shows like that and yeah just like keep building on it. I think it was really it really was like a like this is what this is what you could have like if you like really really work and like little teas sticking yeah <laughs> a cherry tickler uh, you cherry tickler <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're, uh, you're saying you met the boys like for catfish you know, try and like get on the rest of the, the bill for the Well, show. see, like Neil, because they they were doing like Europe afterwards, and Neil was like to the tour manager, he's like, I, he's, I see they've not announced the support for Europe yet. You know, like the guys are free, and tour and manager was, was like, I'll have a think. One. And there was a thing in London as well. Um, they were like they were playing a gig in like a new venue in London. It was Brit Street, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, and um. That and we got like an it was just it was the actually it was the worst thing ever like we got like a message saying like it was like not even it was like even less time it was like two days it was like you might be su like supporting them in two days in London mm -hmm. and we were literally like booking everything we got the van on hold we had like had work off like, everything yeah. ready and like we just hadn't had the confirmation and then I don't know it just it didn't work out like they just I don't think they'd had a support in the end like uh, I think it was like really bad like stormy weather at that time and I think like what the like agent told Neil was like you know the whole kind of like Viola Beach thing was on like a lot of like the music industry's mind of like just like driving in like bad oh, yeah, conditions yeah. and like tipping the van and whatever and, but it was just it was gutting because like you know we would have like we were just ready to go yeah. like in a heartbeat like as anyone would be and then it was just like you know I you can't help but think you're going to do it like you, you you'll tell yourself like as many times as you like like it's not going to happen but inside you know you're going like it's probably gonna happen <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't it's just like <laughs> ah but it's just like you know we just keep going until the next one happens and yeah yeah so uh hopefully the next time you play an arena like that you'll have a better experience Amish, when you go on a booze run ah uh, yeah the worst booze run you could probably get. Really. <laughs> well, we were talking about on the car on the way up, eh? We had it was the, the hydro, uh, we were, can't even let's have a couple of listeners and that came before you go. And and we had we had, had a few beers just and whatever, <laughs> but we had plenty of time. And uh, I was, we were just sitting thinking, it was me, me and uh, Duncan who were doing sound. We're like, once we this gig's finished, it's like, we're kind of, it's not in the middle of nowhere, but there's no pubs or nothing like that. So we should get a few cans for after. And I was like, that's a good shout. So I got my phone and the nearest shop and it was something like 300 yards away or something, 400 yards. It was literally across the motorway behind the hydro and the shop was there. So I was like, man, that's like a five minute walk. Like, that, that, that's fine. So I was like, got out the back of the, the, the arena and everything. And was, at this point, there was loads of people like heading down. I found the shop. So I just got a couple of crates of tenants and what, whatever. And uh, I was like, shit, I, I got to carry all this back. And at that point, it was, it was quite slow, like all the people moving. I was like, I was going to grab an Uber, man, like, like rapid. So I jumped on and you probably all used Uber, but <laughs> the, the driver's not meant to have his own belongings in the back of the car. So I get in this guy's car and I was like, I better put my beer in the back. And he's like rucksacks and like jackets and shit. And I was like, <laughs> I was, he says, oh, I'll just stick at your feet, man. Just stick at your feet. So I had like crates of beer and a bottle and everything right at my feet. I'm sitting talking to me, oh, I'm playing the hydro tonight, all this sort of stuff. I get around and I just hear a can go, at my feet <laughs> I'm like fuck 
fuck. And this is like right outside the front door. So I'm like, like at, at the, the venue. So I'm like, okay. So I started taking it out and I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. Spit a bit of, like, wasn't even much, just like a, a little a little spritz. And uh, and he was like, uh, I like that sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, 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 and uh, <laughs> I was going to do something. Very yeah. obvious indeed, right there. Yeah. Love that. And uh, I, he, was, he was trying to get me to pay this ridiculous uh, charge, which I refused to do. Um, and cut off story short, I got charged for the, it was like 58 quid or something for... Did you pay it? Uh, well, the thing was... I Uber, went, they just take it? Uber just, they just took the money out. Well, uh, well, I can't, so I was pretty cross about that. Did you get banned through one of the night? And, uh, I, well, I only had about two cans, and everyone else scoffed the rest, so I was like... <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> Not worth the price. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth the most expensive short journey of a paper. <laughs> but aye, so then at the back of that, you've announced uh, your, your own tour around the UK, Um like you were saying, he's got a few dates in um, Manchester, Newcastle, Aberdeen, Edinburgh, and then unfortunately, like COVID uh, boy, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the planet, and then everything got cancelled. Like, how got it for you? Well, we found we were at the cottage after the Edinburgh. Edinburgh, yeah, we went to. We were actually a um, bunch of guys from Nashville, like some of the writers and stuff from the publishing company that we've been working with are meant to be coming over to the cottage um, and to like, so they were going to come like see the gig um, in Edinburgh and then like come and write with us in the cottage and it was this whole big thing had been planned for months and then obviously it kind of started kicking off for them and we got like a call from them being like, we're not going to make it like, because you know, they were going to have to like quarantine. Yeah. So they were just like, you know, it's going to be pointless. So we were like, that's that's fine. Like, so we played Edinburgh, went to the cottage. We were like, let's write ourselves anyway. And it was just like, yeah, it was it was really gutting. Like, because we knew, I think we all knew like what was happening. Like, and, and, and Neil was Neil was like on the phone, like with like the booking agent for ages, and everybody kind of knew it was like it was just it was getting cancelled. So it was just trying to like get the energy to like write and record like some demos and stuff. No, um, the tour was gonna get cut. It's just it was yeah. awful. Yeah. It sucked, but I mean, we got like we got four four great songs from that weekend as well, from that cottage. And I mean, yeah, since like after the tour got cancelled, it was just like, right, what can we do to like make sure we're not just you know sitting hibernating until we can do something like let's be like pre mm. proactive. So mm. just writing, recording demos, and just getting lots of stuff done, planned, and I'd say like we've come out of this like we've come out I feel like we come out of lockdown pretty well and luckily we had like a lot of pre-recorded material like losing it and Riviera and stuff that we were able to put out whereas I feel like a lot of other bands were kind of more unlucky that they were like about to go into the studio yeah. and then it all everything got shut down and they were like just having to like try and work out what to release whereas we had like some releases to to kind of take things over as well. Mm -hmm. I'd say that you're saying you've come out of lockdown pretty well. You've been pretty creative throughout. Um, yeah. Doing a few things, A to Z covers, um, cooking with dance on tables. <laughs> uh, hey, Mish, I've, got, I've got a question. Um, uh -huh. Have you ever cooked before that? Because every time I'm in Pizza Boy, you're always there. <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely shocking at cooking, but I've actually got, I did a... I had home ec, home ec at school. <laughs> so, <laughs> so did everyone. So, 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 I, I did it as in two. I did. I did, I did it in two. Uh, so I can cook a little bit, but I'm just too lazy, man. You make a fajita bacon, you're sorted. <laughs> so did you say where did the inspiration come from? From that was that was it something like father and do something similar to that? I think so. Yeah, like we saw hell that. Better cook to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, it's like embarrassing. Like we're actually like. We'd seen like some of their cooking with father son videos, like, and they they used the cottage as well. And I think one of the guys just like really really loves cooking there, and he was like, "Oh, like, I'm gonna be making like tandoori chicken," and he brought like his own like kind of charcoal like kind of grill thing as well. And he was like made home made naan bread and stuff, and like. I was like, this is like so class, and then obviously you'll get like cooking with Reese, and he's just fucking <laughs> <laughs> Papa John's. <laughs> yeah, but I like um, we've been up to quite other things. Like um, you released, well, obviously you released it, but um, variations of O with yourself. Yeah, was from, I was like, yeah, it was something at uni I did like, and I was like, I can come in handy like if we were like running out of stuff. But it was something I actually wanted to get out as well, just like do a kind of orchestral kind of stuff like it's something I do like in my own time as well just for like fun but that was a kind of thing that 
with uni we got it like performed by like the scottish chamber orchestra which was like a cool experience and it was cool to kind of like hear one of our songs like done like totally differently as mm. well so do you think you'll uh, do things like that in the future like use more sort of orchestral instruments throughout your recordings or i think so i mean if they like there's always like songs i think like it'd be great to have like some like real kind of like strings or brass and stuff in it but at the moment like stuff like that's just like it's just like extra extra expenses yeah. and stuff and like at the moment i think we just kind of have to keep it kind of as like raw as we can and obviously adding like bits of like synthesizers and electronic production but like maybe like down the line that's like something i'd love to have like like you know like brass players and woodwind players and stuff in a studio and kind of like Work at arrangements, work at arrangements for them and stuff mm-hmm. but yeah because with like ono obviously that had like a whole string arrangement but that was like we just sent off the song to like um there was like a, a string quartet in, in like america and they just like arranged the whole thing and recorded it and sent it back like so we just like we didn't have anything to do with that really they just sent back their files and stuff but yeah something to do in the future i guess mm. um as well as that you were um you mentioned pg Morris quite a lot um, throughout this, you've also done a live stream for them, and then one of your photos from your gigs was put on the Save Your Venues t-shirt. Mm. Uh, how important do you think that is to be involved with something like that to help yeah, small massive, yeah. survive? Massive, it's massive. Yeah, like the guys that run PJs, like Calms, like they they're so supportive of like young bands and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't know of like of other bands in other cities, but like the way like they helped us out, like they kind of they had like they were doing like these kind of like college projects as well and they were got us in touch with like they got us i remember we supported like model airplanes like um when they were doing quite well and that was like through them they gave us a bunch of contacts they kind of like just like taught us a lot of stuff of like how to kind of like set yourself up in a venue and i don't think like yeah like the venue itself is like is amazing and it's like it's like the core of like the Dunfermline music scene but also like the guys that are running it as well are like so like supportive and like encouraging of like new music and Dunfermline music like it's just like essential that that like stays open for like Dunfermline to still be like a musical town and the fact that it made it's like such a renowned place that you speak to bands from all over the country really and man we mentioned like PJs to to like Van McCann, um, and he was just like, "Oh yeah, Callum, is he still running that?" Like, it's like that's like they've like they've got that reputation of just being like great guys. Like, like everybody yeah, remembers. Yeah, she said, "He's like, yeah, I remember when we used to go up to Spoons and go a pint." And I was like, "That's what we do." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there've been plenty of big names to the doors anyway over. The yeah, years, but, uh, you look at all like the posters, like Miles Kane, Jake Bard. It's just like yeah, crazy, Simmons, Jerry it's Cinnamon, yeah. Louis Capaldi as well. Capaldi, yeah. Years ago, it's so. just like they seem like they've got, and you look at all these bands that are like playing like that are really up and coming. Like they'll play PJs, like because yeah. they know it's like even though it's like Dunfermline, it's just this like town like next to Edinburgh like, across <laughs> the water. It's like it's got this reputation of like that's like a venue you should be playing, like yeah, yeah. and rightly so. But I so um, lockdowns sort of coming to an end. Measures are getting eased. You guys are back in rehearsing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been told by Neil I need to include this you have a new EP coming out soon how's that going? it's good like, I think everything's pretty pretty ready for that really like that's like all mm-hmm. kind of releases that we um, recorded in December before like the last PJ's gig actually um, it was like a week in the studio then um, so we're just like sitting on them they're all ready to go I think we just, I think we've got like the next one's coming out in about a month, um, but yeah, like I think we're just we're excited to get all that stuff out, but also just get back into the studio. I think we're we're planned to go in the next month or two and just like get a whole new bunch of songs ready and just like come out like fresh and mm-hmm. yeah, like ready, yeah, basically ready to go. It's more that you can't even play them. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's like yeah. Back at it soon enough. Yeah, but that's, yeah. a, the, that's the tightest jewels will ever be. Yeah. You've got ages till you can get yeah. it. So yeah. like, play it Exactly. Bye. Yeah. Um, just round up there. Then. Yeah. Happy with that guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Nice one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.